对。أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد First of all, we thank Allah Azza wa Jal for his blessing He still give us chance and opportunity to continue our life uh, until today uh, 28 July 2022 and uh, 28 Zul Hijjah uh, 2022 uh, Alhamdulillah and we also uh, approaching the new uh, the new year of Hijri, uh, Hijri insha'Allah for the 14, uh, 1444 Hijrah, insha'Allah. May Allah uh, bless all our, all our matters in our life. Um, uh, and I, I also, we also would like to welcome all attendees, attend, attendees and all participants and audiences to our ISTEC IUM series on spiritual, intellectual and mental well-being enhancement. And this is the Talk uh, number six or the sixth session for our uh, series, uh, uh, for our talk series, uh, which, will, uh, which, we, which is conducted or organized by uh, the ISTEC IIUM Health uh, Spiritual and Mental Health Committee under the uh, purview of Associate Professor Dr. Nick Muhammad Saiful Alizi bin Nick Abdullah. And today, we are honored to be. Um, We are honored to have our our honor honorable uh, speaker today, which is Associate Professor Dr. Abdul Latif bin Abdul Razak, uh, the head of Department of Interdisciplinary Studies, Fundamental and Interdisciplinary Studies from Kulia of uh, Abu Hamid Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman Kulia of uh, Islamic Review Knowledge and Human Sciences IUM, and he uh, will be presenting the topic. Uh, a talk or a lecture entitled The Chemistry of Happiness uh, in our uh, slot today. And as a beginning or as the introduction, as a brief introduction to this topic, Allah Azza wa Jal, if we uh, look at or if we recite in the Holy Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal has mentioned about 21 in 21 places in, Quran, in the Holy Quran the word or the connotation of happiness in the word Fariha, or in its root word is Fariha, but in the 21 uh, places in Quran, in various uh, in various forms, Yafrahun, uh, Farihun, uh, Farihu, uh, and and so on. And among among of the, uh, that verses, uh, I would like to recite or I would like to uh, share with all of you uh, one of them, which Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim وإذا أذقنا الناس رحمة فرحوا بها وإن تصبهم سيئة بما قدمت أيديهم إذا هم يقنطون. This is a very uh, very glorious uh, verse and very great verse that uh, describes uh, the 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 uh, the natural of the, the nature of human being, which means and when we let the people taste mercy, they rejoice therein. But if evil afflicts them, afflicts them for what their hands have put forth, immediately they despair. They, they despair. Uh, Surah Al Rum, verse number thirty-six. So this is among uh, the words that mention uh, the term or the connotation of farihu uh, or uh, happiness. They happy or they rejoice. So uh, without further ado, um, I believe our our honourable speaker today will. Uh, will explain more detail about our topic today, the chemistry of happiness, and he will, inshallah, uh, describe and explain it in the light of uh, Quran and Sunnah, and also how the uh, how our Islamic scholars uh, view uh, this uh, topic, inshallah. And without further ado, I would like to um, invite our honourable speaker, Dr. Abdul Latif Abdul Razak, to uh, deliver his uh, lecture. Uh, the, the stage is uh, for you, uh, Doctor. Pada tafadzal mashkura. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين 
واشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم اما بعد واحييكم بتحيات الاسلام السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته um, so the sound is okay yeah let's start okay okay alhamdulillah okay bye thank you uh, thank you very much uh, 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 dr ni uh, ustad mama nazrin uh, for inviting me to share uh, knowledge inshallah uh, this is just sharing i know those who listeners maybe they are more knowledgeable than than me <coughs> but uh, you know the spirit of islam is fadhkir fa inna dhikra tanfa'un mu'minin and we keep uh, reminding each, each other okay let me uh, present the topic uh, for today uh, the chemistry of happiness actually this uh, this is based on the book by imam al ghazali rahimahullah kimya kimya is saada been translated into malay as uh recipe kebahagiaan and in english as the chemistry of happy happiness it is a very small book but it is very valuable worth for you to 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 read uh, imam ghazali is considered as our reference in uh, in islamic psychology huh? especially uh, you know when we, when we talk about the heart when we talk about the psycho uh, spiritual uh, psycho spirituality okay let me uh, present uh, this <clears throat> okay uh you know the i'm sorry the uh because the uh, what i call this the the slide in <laughs> in somehow in malay yeah uh, but i translate into into english yeah? i hope that i think many of you are already long in malaysia uh, hopefully those uh, international staff they they can understand a little bit <laughs> malay <laughs> okay <clears throat> Recipe, uh, kebahagiaan. You know, uh, uh, start when you uh, bring the ayah of the words uh, fariha, fariha. You know, and then you mention, you read the ayah. So uh, actually, um, the word uh, happiness uh, uh, to be better translated as uh, saada, saada. Because the word, when you when you read the ayah, it said that you know uh, this is the nature, nature man by nature. When you receive the nikmah, you will be happy. When you receive the musibah, then you are in trouble. So meaning that when you talk about uh, farha, farha is not stable. It's not stable. Meaning that it depends on your moods. Eh? So when something good, you will be happy. When something bad, you will be sad. So that's a, that's a natural. But when you talk about saada, saada is different. You know, in whatever situation, you will be happy. Eh? Then if it is good, you are happy. And even it is it, it is musibah also you are happy and that is sa saada meaning it is more sta stable. That's why in the, in a very nice hadith of the prophet the prophet said, uh, "Ajaban li amril mu'min." It is a wonder uh, for the matters of the Muslim. Amruhum uh, kul uh, khair. You know the all he, all their matters are good. Is a asabat musibah. Uh, sabara. Why uh, uh, when they receive the ni'mah, they'll be they they are shakir, they are thankful to Allah. When they are having musibah, they are sabar. So, they are sabar. Meaning that both are good. You know, in our life, actually, in our life, there are two things only happen to us. Number one, ni'mah, and number two, musib musibah, and both are good for us. Allah, the prophet said, both are good for for us. You know how it becomes good. How it becomes good if it is nama, they are thankful. You know, my dear friends. You know, when something good happen to you, it is not necessarily good to you. You know, Fir'aun, for example, Qarun, for example, they are a lot of wealth. Is it good? No. You know, when you know, good is not according to our interpretation. Good is in accordance to Islamic interpretation. What is good? Something that brings you closer to Allah. Then it is good. But if something happened to you, you got high salary, you got what they call this durian runtuh, a lot of money. 
but it brings you away from Allah, that's not good. That is musi, musibah. You know, for something to become good, look whether it brings you to Allah or it brings you away to Allah. That's the definition of, of good. And that's why, uh, you, know, uh, you know, what we normally understand, uh, in this world, this is, this is not fair. Life in this world is not fair. How? You know, sometimes, all, uh, sometimes good people, what happened to them? Bad things. Bad people, what happened to them? Good things. Many bad people, they become rich. Many good people, they become poor. Uh, God is there. How could this happen? You know, it's supposed to happen is all good things happen to good people and all bad things happen to bad people. Is that right? Is that right, Ustaz Mahasri? And does it happen in this world? No. It's not like it's not like that. But I want to tell you, it is it is like that. That's what is happening. That's what is happening. All good things happen to good people, and all bad things happen to bad people. But we have to define good. We have to define good. Good is what brings us to Allah. Bad is what brings us away from Allah. You see, yeah, you know, if let's say, for example, by having sickness. It brings you closer to Allah. Before that, you are you are away from Allah, and Allah give you sickness, and it brings you to Allah. What about sickness? Is it good or bad? It is good. It is good. But if you have a lot of wealth, then and that wealth brings you away from Allah. Is it good or not? Is it bad? So that's that's true. This is Allah Adil. All good things happen to good people and all bad things happen to bad people. This is what, what we mean by sa'adah. Sa meaning sa'adah means, you know, in whatever situation, you are ha happy. You are ha happy. When you are having musibah, you are passion. But when you are having the ni'mah, you are shakir. You are thank thankful to Allah subhanahu no, wa no, ta'ala. So what Al Ghazali mentioned. Now this is about the definition of what they call this uh, happy happiness. It is more suitable with the word sa saad. So, <clears throat> so happiness actually uh, in the in the heart. Happiness is in in the heart. Happiness is not what you pursue. Uh, to, uh, listen carefully. Yeah, uh, this is the statement by a great uh, motivator. You know, <clears throat> happiness is not what you pursue. Happiness is what you attract. Do you understand? <clears throat> Let me explain. You know, <clears throat> actually happiness in the heart, in our heart. If you go out to look for happiness, you look for wealth, you found the wealth, but in your heart, you don't have happiness, then the wealth will not guarantee your happy happiness. But if you have happiness in your heart, then you find the wealth, then the wealth will help you to be happy. Meaning that it is in you, yourself. It is in yourself. When you have happiness, you will attract all the happiness outside there. So happiness is not what you pursue. Happiness is what you attract. So how to attract happiness? How to attract happiness? You must have something that will attract happy happiness. Okay. <clears throat> so these are the, the, recipe, the recipe of uh, what I call the recipe of happy happiness. According to Imam Al-Ghazali, the main material, the main material that is you must have four knowledge. You must have four type of knowledge. Okay. Empat jenis ilmu. Number one, this is number one, this is the most fundament, fundamental. That is the knowledge about Allah. Right? The knowledge about Allah. Example, right? Allah is the most knowing, Al-Alim. 
Allah is the most meticulous al khabir Allah is the most care al hafiz Allah is the most powerful al qadir and the most merciful ar rahim uh, the most you know meaning that perfect you cannot find any what they call defect in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you imagine if Allah is with you you know what what do you want actually what do you want actually you know ustaz i want to be knowledgeable how about if you are with the most knowledgeable then you will be also knowledgeable ustaz i want to be the most uh, the i want to be the richest how about if you are with the most rich that is allah al ghani al ghani ustaz i want to be strong how about if you are with the strongest the most strong that is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning that if you have allah you have everything but if you have everything without allah actually you have na- nothing my dear brothers and sisters uh, this is the, the this is the most what they call this uh, powerful tips uh, for happy happiness meaning that you must have allah in your in your heart if you have him you will attract all the happiness everything that come to you uh, will bring to you happy happiness but if you don't have him then you know you have money money will destroy you you have what are called as wealth wealth will destroy you you know uh, you know people say the great words you know, uh, money if it is it if it is a servant it is a great servant once it's become a master it is a very cruel cool master so meaning that you know you know before you 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 want to find the rich yeah? before you want to find the richness find the owner of the rich first yeah? that is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then if you find the owner then you become rich rich will protect you but if you go for the richness and you become rich you forget the owner the richness will destroy you so this is the the facts and eh? this is very important important you know there is one uh, <clears throat> there is one story you know uh, the person the person you know he walked with uh, his mother you know in kampung in village you know and then the coconut you know the coconut fall the coconut fall on the head of the ma- the mother straight fall uh, on the head of the the mother you know what happened the mother bleeding the head bleeding and then was uh, admitted to the hospital and pronounced dead so the mother that you know what happened to to this person he suffered depression uh, he suffered uh, depre- depression uh, he suffered depression he suffered he suffered what i call this the feeling of of guilty uh, the feeling of of guilty yeah. <clears throat> you know uh, this is uh, the story mentioned by uh, by him uh, the story mentioned by by him you know then he be, he can to what they call this he, he he is cured how he is cured he is cured when he become real law of what is determined by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how long after four years so that's how expensive the price is how expensive the price is he need four years you know to to be cured with one simple word that is rida with the takdir of allah subhanahu no ta'ala you see that's meaning that whatever happened to us we must understand everything already has been scripted by allah subhanahu no wa ta'ala everything has been scripted by the best script script writer this is number number one you know <clears throat> you, you, you know uh, sometimes we think that start it is you know accidentally happened to me now i want to tell you nothing accidental in the in the hand of in the work of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accidental only happen in the mind of the people why because you know why because ah uh, people don't look at the whole script but if people look at the whole script then they will see that everything happened to according to the 
to the script ha? to the script by Allah Subhanahu wa no, ta'ala ridha they must be ridha find the hikmah find the hik the hikmah okay that's number number one. Ha? that's number number one. hakikatnya whatever happened uh, whatever happened to you then you find the solution you know we have so many solutions to solve the the problem so whatever solution but you must make sure that it brings you closer to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala then you will be ha happy that's the tip you know whatever happened to you make sure that you bring uh, your heart you bring yourself to Allah Subhanahu no, wa ta'ala some people you know when they have problem they look for solution they look for solution is it good to look for solution yes you know uh, even Allah also asked us to look for solution but the best solution is what the best solution is you look for Allah because Allah said you know Allah said what uh, in surah at-talaq uh, in surah at-talaq wa may yattaqillah yaj'al lahu makhraja wa may yattaqillah yaj'al lahu makhraja you know if you fear Allah then Allah will guide you Allah will guide you yeah actually we we cannot go out from the problem unless with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know so the best way to go out from the problem that is to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he will guide you wa may yattaqilla yaj'al lahu makhraja you know that surah at-tala verse 2 you go to surah at-tala verse 4 uh, verse 4 wa may yattaqilla uh, yaj'al lahu min amrihi yusra uh, if you fear Allah then Allah will make your things e easy uh, Allah will make your things e easy so this is this is number number one uh, tips number number one respect number number one why because the purpose of our creation the purpose of our creation is to know to get close and worship Allah subhanahu no ta'ala this is our purpose you know uh, what is the purpose of the hand the purpose of the hand to grab to take something but how about if the hand cannot grab for example the hand is sick what is the purpose of the eye to see how about if the eye cannot cannot see the eye is sick what is the purpose of the ear the purpose of the ear is to hear what about if the ear cannot hear the hear the ear is is sick the same thing we are created by allah and for allah but if we cannot for example function in according to the function created by Allah, I am sorry to say that you are sick. Even though you are healthy physically, but actually mentally and spiritually, you are you are sick. Because we are designed uh, to worship Allah, to be close to Allah, but we are away from our real fun function. Uh, our real function. Okay. How about the rest? The wealth, for example. How about the rest? Harta kekayaan, the wealth, health, for example. Is it important or not? Position, is it important or not? Yes, they are very important and contribute to happiness. But with the heart, with the illness of the heart, all this become the poison that may destroy the individ individuals, you know. Uh, those uh, uh, external factors, the wealth and everything, uh, they are actually, they are they are very they are very important. They contribute to our happiness, but with condition, with condition that your heart is healthy. Your heart is is healthy. This is what, as I did tell you, happiness is not what you pursue. Happiness is what you attract, and the major key. You know, you look for the keys for happiness. The major key to happiness is yourself. Eh? Is your yourself? It is within you. It is about your yourself. Okay, that's a uh, that's very impo important. Okay, and then uh, when we talk about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, how to get to Allah? That is through zikir and salat. Is actually salat is, is the 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 most important ibadah. And uh, most of the component of salah, 
it contains also the zikir. Huh? This is according to Ibn Qayyim. Why zikir makes you happy? Ala bi zikrillahi tatma'innul kulub. Sesungguhnya dengan mengingati Allah, hati akan menjadi tenang. By remember, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will make you ha happy. Huh? It will make you happy. So why? Because according to Ibn Qayyim, two emotions cannot be to get together at one one time. So meaning that if you do zikir, you will be happy. When you are happy, it means what? You are not sad. It cannot be you are sad and happy at the same time. Ustaz, you know, I do not know, Ustaz. I'm sad and happy at the same time. Oh, no, cannot. It cannot be. You know, if you are sad, then you are not happy. If you are happy, then you are not sad, for example. They cannot be at one, one time, for example. And, Allah bi zikrillahi tatma'innul kulub. But if you remember Allah, you will be calm, you will be tranquil, you will be happy. Then what does it mean? It means that uh, you are not not sad. So this is the, the rule regarding emo, emotions. Two opposite emotions cannot be together at one, one time. Okay, Ibn Qayyim said, love of Allah brings you to happiness and happiness is the opposite of stress. Happiness is the opposite of, of stress. Meaning that if you are happy, then you will not be stressful. And if you are stressful, what does it mean? It means that you are not ha happy. Okay. What Allah says, Allah says, uh, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً دَنْكَ uh, Those who are away from me, forget me, Allah will make their life narrowed. Allah will make their life. This is the, you know, the, the threat from Allah subhanahu no, wa no, ta'ala. You know, sometimes when we, we have problem, we cannot find the solution. You know, don't blame people, you know, don't blame. We keep blaming others. We don't look at ourselves, we don't do muhasaba. Actually, we have to do muhasaba. We make istighfar, you know, maybe uh, Allah want to, what they call this, uh, <coughs> to uh, to bring us back to, to him. Maybe Allah want to polish us from our sin, for example. Uh, find the hikmah, find the hikmah. But if we are away from Allah, then Allah promise us, Allah tell us that, you know, if you are away from me, I will make your life ne narrow. And if you go for dunya, and dunya become the most important to you, and Allah, in, in, in the hadith, Allah will put in the middle of your eyes, al-fakru. Al-fakru means what? The poverty. You know, Allah will put here, like you wear a glass, and the glass is called poverty glass. No, you know, meaning that whatever you see, you, you feel that you are very, very poor. Why? Not because you have a, a, a little wealth, you have a lot of wealth, but Allah put between your two eyes, that is the glass of power, poverty. Meaning that you will always feel that everything is not eh, enough. Everything is not suffi sufficient. And according to the, the great you know, the great uh, psychotherapist, you know, this experienced psychotherapist, senior psychotherapist, he said that there are many causes of our mental health. And uh, you know, what is the most contributing factor to the mental health? Uh, according to him, his, according to her, she said that the most contributing factors to uh, our problem, mental health problem, is the feeling of insufficiency. What is the feeling of insufficiency? Meaning that no thanks, lack of gratitude, gratitude. That's why in our life, in our religion, you know, the, the first words that should come from our mouth, the first word that should come from our mouth is what? When you open your eyes, Alhamdulillah, illadhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. Thanks Allah for giving me a life uh, again. Then you go into the washroom, you go out, Alhamdulillah, illadhi azhaba anni al-adha wa afani. Then you entered into prayer, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. 17 times per day, you recite Surah Fatiha. The starting is Alhamdulillah. What is all this to bring us to feel what they call this, to thanks Allah, 
to feel uh, to to what to be grateful to whatever Allah has given to to us. So actually, you know, the life of Muslim has been designed in such a way that is so wonder wonderful. You know, in the West, in the West, they don't have all this uh, what they call this uh, 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 life. So then, you know, the, they are they are expert in motivate in motivation. What 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 happened? They introduced they call morning power question. Morning power question. You know, when you wake up, uh, don't look. You know your weaknesses. Don't look at your weaknesses. Don't look at uh, what you don't have. You should ask this question. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Ask this question. They call morning power question. So what are those morning power question? He said that you know. What when you open your eyes, ask this question: What do I have now? <laughs> yeah, what do I have now? Then you see you have everything. You have wife, you have children, you have house, you have job, everything. For example, so meaning that that it brings you to to feel gratitude, gratitude. But if you open your eyes, you look for what you don't have. For example, what what you miss. For example, all the negative things then. Your life will be terri terrible, but in Islam, best open your eyes. Alhamdulillah. In one in the prayer, seventeen times. Alhamdulillah. Thanks Allah. Thanks all Allah. Okay. <coughs> and wa may yatakilla yajallahu min ah yajallahu wa may yatakilla yajallahu mak makroja. You know when you fear Allah, Allah will promise. Allah will open to what they call this uh, the door to your pro to your problem. That's why you know the best way if you have problem, you bring yourself to Allah so that you deserve to be helped by Allah. The question is, do you deserve or not to be helped by Allah? Because you will not go out from the from the problem unless with the help of Allah. The question is, do you deserve it? So brings yourself closer to Allah, so that you deserve uh, uh, His His help. That is the best, the best way. Besides, you go for Sunnatullah, uh, you go to Al Allah. Okay. <clears throat> Al Ghazali <coughs> said, "Zikrullah is uh, you know uh, is the opposite, uh, the anti for the whispers of the shy." Shaitan, in the hadith, uh, 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 the the shaitan has the trunk, yeah? has the trunk. You know he he will put uh, on your heart if you are away from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But if you remember Allah, then he will lift up his his trunk. You know his uh, this blah blah lie. You know you know you know this. Today we live we live in 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 internet, no? Wi Fi. You know what does it mean by shaitan putting the trunk on your heart, meaning that connected to shaitan Wi-Fi. <laughs> so when you are connected to the shaitan Wi-Fi, all the data will come in from sh shaitan. So when you remember Allah, you disconnect with shaitan Wi-Fi. You connected with uh, Wi-Fi Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Then all the data. With, that will come from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So it depends. So which connection you you have, whether Shaitan Wi-Fi or Allah wa Wi-Fi. It depends on your heart uh, connected with what what it calls this. Huh? Uh, so, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the second uh, uh, recipe uh, uh, receipt for the happiness is uh, the knowledge about uh, who we are. Who am I? Uh, who who we are or who am am I? Actually, we are we are of body and and soul. We are of body and and soul. Actually, I want to tell you, brothers and sisters. Actually, we are not the body is not us. The body is not us. Actually, we are the ruh. You know, when we are created, we are created as a ruh, huh? as a a ruh. And then Allah uh, take the our testification, Allah to be Rabbikum, and I am not uh, your Lord, and I am I not uh, your Lord. <clears throat> and then uh, we say, Bala shahid, shahid. Now, you know, at the you know at the 
at the beginning we are created in the ruh form then later we are going to be born in this earth we need a body then allah create our body in the womb of our ma mother fa idha sawaytuhu wa nafakhtu fihi min ruhi when i finish forming the body of adam i blew into him from my my ruh then allah blew the ruh into the the body then you know after some time in this dunya we are separated again from our body uh, inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun we separate again from the the body you know when we are in paradise we don't need this body anymore because this body this body is not suitable for the abadi because this body is subject to decay in 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 jannah we need a different body then allah mold the new book body uruban achraba allah mold the new the new book body my dear brothers and and sisters and uh, sisters <clears throat> you know uh, so we are the roh you know the body is created from the soil how about the roh the roh is being breathed by allah subhanahu wa taala you know meaning that the the roh is close to allah the happiness of the ruh which is us who am i we are the ruh and our happiness is is getting close to allah be close to allah remember allah zikrullah ma'rifah that is the food of the ruh that make us happy you know this uh, rice for example house for example shelter is for the body the body also very important you cannot you cannot perform hajj unless with the with your body is healthy you cannot feel happy unless your body is healthy the body is 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 very important but it is not you you are the the ruh you know the the imam ghazali gave an analogy like the camel you know the body is the camel the vehicle but the 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 ruh is the owner of the camel you know take care of the camel take care the right of the camel what is the right of the camel the food the shelter the drink but you cannot be the slave to your camel don't be slaves to your camel the camel should be slaves to you bring your camels to allah not you become slaves to your camel many of us hidup dan matiku kerana untaku my life and my death for my camel you need that for my body you know at the end allah say Oh, returns to me. Leave your camel. Ah, huh? I thought I'm camel. No, you are. You are not camel. You are the owner of the camel. And then Allah will ask you, Have you done something to your camel? Have you bring your camels to Allah? Oh Allah, I forget you, Allah. I become slaves to my camel. My life is more for my, for my camel. Then Allah said, Your your place in the hell. And you and Allah ask the camel, your body. How about? How about you, camel? You know how about your owner, the camel? You know you take care of the camel, your body, but if you don't bring him to Allah, he will betray you. He will step back you. Oh Allah, he supposed to bring me to you, to worship you, but he brings me away from you. Then because of that, you will be thrown deeper into the the hell. Don't blame the camel. the camel is in a innocent so so what what should we blame our ourselves because we forget about our ourselves right? we forget about our ourselves that's we must under understand so we are the ruh we are the ruh right? so and then we must understand about our nature that our nature is we khuliqal insan dhaif we are created weak so we need, don't pretend to be strong we are strong only when we are with the strongest with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala otherwise we are very very weak otherwise we are very very weak okay between effort and result you know what is what is our duty our duty is just do our our best result result is not ours results belong to all allah result belongs to allah don't bother with god business mind your own business don't bother with god business mind your own business we we got headache you know because we always disturb 
uh, the job of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Example, eh? you know, I should get what I want. You know, what's that? You know, I should get what I want. What's that? So uh, if you come to me, I will say, if it is so, be God. So, you know, <laughs> then you can get whatever you want. But we are not God. We are, uh, we are the servants of God. We just do our best. The result, the result is is not ours. Whatever decided upon us, that must be the best for for us. Yeah, is it is it impossible? It is impossible for Allah to to do zalim to us. It is impossible for Allah to what they call this to to do things without what re reason. There must be a hik. There must be a hikmah. There must be a reason. There must be a hikmah. That's why at the end. Go back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and find the hik, the hikmah. Okay. Okay. This is a uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, uh, the second receipt uh, for for happy happiness. Uh, this is about uh, the I or aku. Who am I? Imam Ghazali gave an analogy as I did say the camel and its owners. So this is your the owner, and then you, and this is the camel jasad. So brings your camel uh, to Allah Subhanahu. No, Taala, uh, because yeah, at the end you cannot blame your camel, and then you know uh, actually your, your camel will follow, will follow you, uh, will follow. But if you follow the camel, then the camel will will guide you, <laughs> it will direct direct you. But you are not supposed to be slave for your cam camel. And then the third uh, receipt is uh, the knowledge about this this world. The knowledge about this this world. This world, you know, we must understand that. It is temporary, temporary. Uh, it is then temporary. When you are, let's say, everything in this world, all things in this world are tempo, tem temporary. Sometimes you are up, not uh, you will not be forever up there. Sometimes you are going to be down. If you are ill, for example, you are not the, 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 all the time ill. You will be health, healthy. You know? If you are happy, no, you are not going to be uh, all time ha happy. Uh, sometimes you will be sad. So this is what they call this the nature of this world that we must uh, be right, rational. We must accept that is it keep it keep change changing. It keep change changing. Um, there is nothing permanent in this in this world. Uh, nothing perma permanent. No perfection. No perfection. We cannot find perfection in this in this dunya. Perfection may happen only in para. In paradise, for example, okay, we must accept this fact. And then this dunya is uh, uh, very what they call this uh, persuasive, uh, pers persuasive. If you follow, if you follow dunya, and then the dunya will attract you. It will destroy you uh, to that extent. Even the dunya also doesn't want you any anymore. So this is the nature of this dunya. It is uh, is very uh, pers persuasive. And then, uh, and and this dunya is actually the nature of this dunya is difficult, difficult uh, or a test, uh, or a test. Uh, this is you know uh, uh, Scott Peck, uh, you know his book, The Road Less Travel. He said, this is the first paragraph of the book. He said, what life is difficult. This is a great truth, one of the greatest truths. Once we truly know that life is difficult, then life is no longer difficult. <laughs> this is the fact. Eh? Just accept the fact that life is difficult. Then you don't. Uh, then you you uh, accept the, the fact. You know, uh, these people uh, lately people uh, used to to have zikir. What zikir? Uh, in Malay we call susah, 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 susah. In English to translate into English, the zikir is difficult, 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 difficult. Difficult, difficult, you know, whatever you do, uh, what comes from your mouth, difficult, difficult, difficult. You know? do, you, do you think that when we say difficult, then uh, the thing become easy? No. Just accept the fact that life is difficult, then it, 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 it is no longer matters. Uh, <clears throat> it is no longer matters. Okay. And then the, the, the final receipt, receipt is uh, uh, the knowledge about akhir, akhirat. Uh, the knowledge about akhir, akhirat. Uh, it is uh, it is the our final desti destination, and it is uh, it is perma permanent. 
it is per permanent and the prophet give an analogy you know you go to uh, beside the sea for example put your fingers into the sea and then and the water uh, on your fingers that's an analogy between uh, what is there in akhir, akhirah you know meaning that uh, compared to akhirah in, in in this dunya it is like the water on your fing fingers for example the rest are akhir so sometimes you know we go for this little thing we go for these temporary things you know we sell the permanent one we sacrifice the permanent one for the sake of temporary temporary for the sake of these little little things Imam Ghazali said this is you know life is about business you are selling and buying you are selling and buying you sell the permanent to get the temporary you sell the greatest, the great one to get the little thing. What, what type of transaction is this? Imam Ghazali said, this is the most stupid transaction, the most stupid business. When you sacrifice the abadi for the temporary, temporary. So this is about akhirat. Uh, the akhirat is our destiny. Destination. When when there are conflict between akhirah and dunya, so the 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 priority should go to what they call this to akhir akhirah. Huh? Priority should go to akhir akhirah. Dunya is very important. Yes, and there will be no akhirah without dunya. Huh? but if there are conflict between the two, give uh, the priority to uh, what they call this akhir akhirah because that the akhirah is our real home. Our real home. You know, whatever you do, whatever you do, uh, imagine that you are furnishing your real home. You do prayer, you put the icon on your real home. You put the, you widen your real home. For example, you you make your real home uh, uh, comfortable. Comfortable. Don't destroy your real home. That is akhira by doing what Allah has uh, what called for. For a bit actually, you know, uh, yeah, when we go to hotel, and this world is a uh, temporary transit. If if you go to the hotel, and then you want to change the hotel into your home, you want to put the aircon, you want to to put the furniture, you know, uh, you say to the hotel owner, I want to put the aircon, I want to put the furniture, you know, the, and then the owner said, you know, yeah, this is for three, two, three days. How could you treat this hotel like this? This is dunya. It's temporary. You want to make it the real home? You know how? You know this is not supposed to happen. You know when you leave the hotel, uh, start uh, smiling. You start when you leave the hotel. No people is crying and uh, leaving the hotel uh, and because you know well, I cannot leave the hotel. Uh, I no. You know the same thing. Uh, this dunya is like hotel temporary. You are not supposed to cry leaving the the dunya. For your real home, you are supposed to be happy to arrive at your real, real home. But because you know we treat this dunya as our real home, that's why it is so difficult for us to leave this, uh, this home, this hotel. And then when you go to, let's say you go to Kedah, you go to uh, Kelantan, and then you, there is R and R and R and R rest and uh, rest, rest and what? Uh, something like that. You know, you get rest and. You know when you don't be too serious uh, about R and R because it is just temporary. Temporary. The same thing, for example, in this dunya. You know, sometimes you give the whole of your time, everything, energy for this dunya, while it is only R and R and R. You know, you are supposed to give your full time to your real home. That is akhir, akhirah. Huh? <clears throat> that is the knowledge about this. Uh, this akhir. This uh, which is the final receipt for happy happiness. <clears throat> you know, when we talk about uh, it is about uh, uh, paradise and hell, it is about Jannah, uh, it is about the, the hell. Jannah is the ultimate happy happiness. Whatever you want, you will get it in Jan, Jannah. But the, the hell is the most terri terrible, uh, the most terri terrible. Uh, okay. Okay, this is uh, uh, how to use this knowledge. How to use this knowledge? You know, I, I, uh, you know, when you have this knowledge, you you stop it in your mind. It works as antivi antivirus. 
you know in those days during my time when you put the thumb drive into the computer then your antivirus will say on your screen virus detected need further action delete quarantine ignore move so this is the work of antivirus antivirus you know meaning that your your uh, your thumb drive there is by virus the same thing when something comes into your mind is canvas if it is virus you delete it don't let it en enter uh, so what is uh, what uh, you know so remember don't forget antivirus needs to be updated updated so this program i uh, will start well, these are updating antivirus antivirus for example so that your antivirus is always uh, up to uh, what they call up to up to date for example some people you know their position is very high but their antivirus is very old for example that's why they are being attacked easily by the virus by the virus so this program you know brings us closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's like uh, what i call this uh, updating our antivirus antivirus and this knowledge also uh, you know as a uh, work as first aid kit first aid kit means a peti kecemas kecemasan before you know you can treat yourself you can treat yourself when something happens to you you can treat your, yourself before if the problem persists then you can go to see the expert you know i was once uh, having accident eh? I, i was uh, hit my car was hit by the uh, drunken driver you know then my my wife uh, 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 warded uh, hospitalized and then you know i i use all my technique uh, to uh, to what they call this to be calm to console myself uh. and this is stuck there this is stuck there you know and then when you go uh, home and be alone be careful uh, when you have problem don't be alone when you are alone your friend will be shy shaitan and shaitan will whisper something that that will make you you down So then you know you know I I use all the technique psychological techniques to console myself but when we, when I am I'm alone then shaitan will wish first yeah so this is the word of shaitan this don't don't use this this is the script of shaitan why this thing happened to me kenapa jadi kat aku macam ni kalau lah law why this thing happened to me kalau la if i don't return no annallahu babun min abwaabi shaitan when something has already happened don't you don't use the word law if for example because uh, you know you open the door for shaitan so uh, you know i have the those knowledge uh, for knowledge so i use the technique called uh, cognitive confrontation technique cognitive confrontation technique where you question back your rationality your wisdom you know if satan say uh, you know wish first to you why can this happen to me i will uh, you know uh, why this happen to me i said why can it happen to you kenapa tak boleh jadi kan it happen to others even worse than uh, others for example then you have no answer you know that this is by virus then you can easily de delete but you need the no the knowledge if you don't knowledge you will be uh, drowned by this feeling of what they call this uh, guilty the feeling of what they call this uh what so many negative feeling <clears throat> remember for uh, uh, important things uh, the right true knowledge about allah so this is the first important uh, materials knowledge about allah knowledge about who you are knowledge about Uh, the fact about this dunya and the knowledge about uh, akhir, akhirah so this is uh, according to imam ghazali the secret recipe for happy happiness uh, the more you know the more you equip yourself with this knowledge the more stable you become the more happy person you you are okay. so uh, <clears throat> but you know this is in, in malay you know because imam ghazali said you know you know you have this knowledge you have the knowledge but you don't use it you don't use it it is like those imam ghazali say it is like those who you know come into the majlis of serving so many delicious foods so many delicious delicious foods but you don't eat the food so does it give meaning to you no it will not give meaning to you 
you have to eat you know you know like you comes you are sick another analogy given by Ghazali you are sick you comes to the gathering of the best doctors with the best medicine so are you going to be healthy no unless you take the medicine and eat the med medicine the same thing with this knowledge you know is it is a recipe for happiness it makes you happy no unless you consume it unless you consume it for example i think i think that's a uh, uh, that's uh, the end of the the talk uh, i will uh, i have to start i have to stop at uh, at uh, uh, at four uh, because you know i am co being contacted by the the, yeah. uh, the uh, <clears throat> maybe we have uh, two or three minutes you have anything okay. thank you inshallah thank you so much jazakallah khairan jazakumullah khairan dr abdul latif yeah very insightful and beneficial knowledge that you shared with us today mm -hmm. and uh, now i would like to open for any uh, discussion or question or any inquiry from our uh, fellow uh, audiences okay uh, we have uh, dr abdul hamid ali zarum he yeah uh, dr abdul hamid yeah. yes you uh, i think you salam know. alaikum can you hear me yeah okay yeah. alaikum how are you very loud yeah inshallah dr abdul latif barakallah thank you very much Mm -hmm. I think that Abdul Latif is uh, specialized in, in, in happiness, in, 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 in talking about it, in uh, bringing happiness to others, in, in, in showing that he's happy. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. uh, Sir Abdul Latif, I have uh, one comment and one uh, short question. Oh, okay. uh, I start with the comment. The comment is that uh, to some scholars, Hassan to Dunya uh, consists of three things. Uh, because one of the scholars, I forgot who is here, uh, when, when he, he said, I, I read the Quran uh, and I uh, found out that Hasanah to Dunya is unknown to us. Because we, every time we repeat the dua, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adab nar. So obviously, Hasanah to Akhirah is to be among the people of Jannah and to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the the greatest hasana that Muslims will, will have in the day of resurrection. But what about hasana to dunya? How do we measure that we are happy in this dunya, that we have goodness? So he said, according to the uh, readings of many scholars based on the ahadith, hasana to dunya consists of three things. Al-Zawjatul Muti'a, Al-Dabbatul Sari'a, Al-Dar Al-Wasi'a. Uh, if we apply these three things in our dunya today, we see uh, if you have an obedient wife, chomel, chante, so obedient, you are so lucky. This happiness, <laughs> and uh, based on the hadith, is the one whenever you look at, you feel happy. Man idha nazara ilayha sarratu, so happy whenever you look at her. Wa idha ghaba hafidatu, when you are away. She keeps the amana. She never betrays you. She fulfills the amana. And after Hasanatu, after, after this Azawj al Muti'a, we have a Dabbatu al Sari'a, the uh, very fast vehicle, a comfortable vehicle. It could be a proton wira, it could be Kanchil, it could be uh, Mercedes Benz, any car. But it is so comfortable that it uh, takes you to your destination as, as fast as possible as quick as possible. The third one is a Darul Wasi'a, big, big house, a comfortable house. This might be a bungalow, a villa, or it could be unit, condo. Anyhow, the house that you are, you are living in is so comfortable. So, so I'd love if now, if, if we apply this as Zawj al Muti'a, a Dab al Sari'a, a Dar al Wasi'a, into what is known today as, as happiness. Uh, how what is what is the relationship between these three things and uh, saada based on Imam Al, Al Ghazali's uh, understanding? The, the 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 question is about why if if you are talking about saada, you said saada is to be taqi, to be a believer. But one might ask, why the non-Muslims today are 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 more happy are more happy than than us? Though they are far away from Allah, though they don't believe in Allah, or they they have already forgotten Islam, religion, Iman, Taqwa, faith. Mm -hmm. For instance, now the 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 Western, the Japanese, the the, the Koreans, 
to some extent. They are more happy than us. Though we are from Quran, we are Muslims, we believe in Allah. So how come, how come we, we are not happy? Uh, and, and the worst is to be, to be sad in dunya and a'udhu billah to be also sad in akhirah. So for them, at least they are happy in this dunya. They are uh, enjoying something good. Okay, uh, <laughs> but, thank you. Uh, I think Dr. Blatik already got uh, the question. Yeah, maybe you can yeah. say it. Actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I think uh, Dr. Abrahamid knows about the, the answer. <laughs> maybe I want to add uh, what uh, Dr. Abrahamid can add further. <clears throat> you know, actually, um, uh, uh, happiness cannot be judged by uh, all these external factors. You know, <clears throat> so these are all external factors. As you know, this uh, what I said uh, before. This and uh, happiness is not what you pursue. Happiness is what you attract. Meaning that you know, uh, all these external factors. Yes, they are the contributing factors to happiness, but it does not necessarily makes you ha happy. You know, we cannot judge uh, happiness by uh, people smiling, for example. Uh, by people, you know, uh, pretending to be happy, you know, you know, uh, this happiness actually, you know, uh, to us, to us, happiness, the real happiness when we are with the most happy happiness. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam wa ilayka ya'udu salam. Oh Allah, you are the happiest, ya Allah. From you come the happiness and to you return the happiness. So meaning that if you are with as-salam, meaning that you are really happy. But if you are away from the as-salam, then even though you pretend to be happy, but Allah knows your, your heart. That's why Allah described those kafirun. You know, their feeling, their state is like those who are struggling, you know, uh, uh, going up to the to the sky, terrible. You know, there are a lot of conflicts in them in themselves. But how they run away? They make themselves be busy. That's why they they have a lot of activities. They make themselves busy because they cannot answer all these fundamental questions. What is your purpose of life? Why you are here? Uh, so that's why they make themselves busy so that all these questions they can run away from this question. That's why if they are alone, if they are, let's say, for example, then the question will come, then normally they will look for the meaning and then they become Muslim. Only Islam is the peace that brings true happy happiness. For example. Okay. Don't be... Okay. I, I think I have to stop. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. For your uh, very... I think uh, this, your, your answer is, uh, satis is uh, it's, uh, quite satisfied. And uh, you, uh, you already answered the question. We have uh, another question here in the chat uh, room. The second question is, the stoics of pagan Rome, bosses of Christianity, al kindi of Islam, and Nietzsche of atheism, all saw that cal calmness as being the aim of a person's life. In your opinion, doctor, is calmness part of happiness or is happiness something more than calmness? You got the question? In your opinion, is calmness uh, because uh, yeah, the, no, sir, I think I cannot focus anymore because you know the dean called me for for oh. anything. Yeah. So I, I, I am so very sorry. <laughs> I have to leave. Okay. 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 So, okay. Next okay. Time, so, next so yeah. I think maybe uh, this question will we, we try to uh, send to you uh, okay. Okay. through okay. the WhatsApp or another app and we, uh, you can answer it uh, later, inshallah. So just for, for this. Uh, Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah. Assalamualaikum. Okay. Okay. So, uh, unfortunately, we don't, we, we, we don't get the ability to answer uh, the remaining question. So, how about, uh, how, I think uh, uh, I'm asking uh, the Nick's opinion. Uh, can we uh, continue with this discussion of all this question, maybe some of our lecturers or some of our professors here uh, would like to answer the question. Dr. Nick? Or just we um, end this session and then we, we uh, try to, we try to uh, uh, speak for the clarification from Dr. Ablatif uh, later on. 
Insyaallah we 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 stop here and then we continue for the next uh, next session monthly. Okay. Uh, Insyaallah. So uh, I would like to uh, apologize to all uh, audience uh, who whose uh, question is not uh, being answerable uh, today in this session. Uh, so uh, we, we try to uh, forward your questions to our speaker just now. Uh, and later on, we can uh, maybe we can uh, share the, the answers in um, student uh, WhatsApp group or uh, Instead Facebook uh, later on, inshallah. So I would like to thank all uh, audiences and our honorable speaker, Dr. Abdul Razak, for his precious time today and for his uh, uh, sharing of uh, beneficial knowledge um, and his wisdom uh, today. And I would like to thank also to our audience for your uh, attendance to this um, bless, uh, blessful um, session and uh, knowledge uh, sharing session, inshallah. So we hope we can uh, see you uh, in our next uh, program, inshallah, which will uh, be conducted by ISTEC IUM. Uh, so I think that's all for today. We end our uh, slot today with Tasbih Kafara and Surah Al As. Thank you so much. Jazakumullah khairan barakallahu fikum. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.